Greetings, fellow scribes! Welcome back to the Archive! This week, I continue my series on the Clans of Legend of the Five Rings by talking about the Phoenix Clan. The Phoenix, especially the Asawa family among them, are the undisputed masters of magic in Rokugan. And they know this. This leads to their having a reputation as being arrogant and prideful. And they kind of deserve it. But they have their other details. They are a pacifistic clan. They are archivists and lore masters. So sit back relax and enjoy as we talk about the Phoenix Clan. When the Kami fell from the heavens, Isawa was there. When the Kami fought between themselves to determine who would lead the growing empire, Isawa was there. Isawa saw this and he said, we do not need these gods. And he gathered followers, those who believe like him, and took them to the north, to a mountain valley. And he created a city there. The walls around the city were raised with magic out of the earth. He said, you see, we can defend our city. We do not need these gods. Our walls are as impregnable as anything they could raise. And then the city flourished. Art, culture, magical research, science, all these were going on in this city that would be called Gisetashi. And Asawa looked at this and said, You see, we do not need them to bring us civilization. We are civilized. And that led to even more of a, they don't need the gods. These gods, these kami. And then came Fulang. While the battles were raging to the south in the midst of the empire, bands of Oni and ogres were slipping past them and attacking Gisetashi. And people died. Isawa lost followers in these battles. But city was defended. Shortly before Shiba and Shinsei arrived at Gisetashi, as Shinsei was seeking his seven thunders, the eldest sister of Isawa died to one of these attacks. When Shiba and Shinsei arrived at the town, at the city, at the gates, they were met by the youngest sister of Asawa. In the white funeral garbs, her hair dusted and, and marred with mourning. And she said, Isawa will not see you. Shinsei said, No, he will. And he pushed past her, leading Shiba. And they came to the center of the city. And here was the funeral pyre for Isawa's sister. And around it was their white clothes of mourning, 
many of Asawa's followers, hands held aloft, blood streaming from their hands and wrists. And Shinsei saw this and responded, What evil is this that you do? Isawa retorted, You are protected by gods and their followers. We are protected by the spirits of our deceased. Their shades bound into our walls. And when trouble comes, when threats come, they come to defend us. And Shinsei was, this is wrong. There is another way. And there was much discourse between them. And finally, Isawa reached a conclusion, or reached the conclusion Shinsei wanted him to reach, that it was better to join with a clan, join with one of the kami, but Shiba made a pledge to him that if Isawa the mortal went as one of Shinsei's thunders that Shiba and his descendants would protect Giseitashi and Isawa's people and Isawa agreed on a condition. That condition was that so that Isawa's people did not believe that Isawa was sending them into slavery, that Sheba must kneel and swear loyalty to Isawa, just as Isawa was going to stand and pledge fealty to Sheba. And that is the Isawa family in a nutshell. Now, a side note is Isawa sent out his brothers and sisters to the other clans to teach them the ways of interacting with the kami. And it's generally believed that many of the major Shugenja families at some point in their past either were founded by an Asawa or had an Asawa marry into them early on so that all these families connect their magic to the Asawa. But this story also lays something else out. You see, this is a story that tells of blood magic before it's seen as evil. This story lays the great curse of the Asawa family. the quest periodically for pure blood magic. Blood magic without the taint of Fulang. 
and periodically this arises as a temptation within the Asawa family and leads someone down that dark path. So yes, the Asawa family have their issues. But, of course, so do the Sheba family. Because of their vow to protect the Asawa family, and because Sheba kneeled, while the Sheba family are the family that the clan champion is chosen from, are the family that represents the clan in the Imperial Courts. They are considered to have little authority within the actual Phoenix Clan. That generally goes to the five elemental masters of the Asawa family. But the Sheba are the ultimate Yojimbos. The Sheba Bushi school puts great focus on working with Shugenja and defending their charges. And those are the two emphases that will always be with that clan school. But the Shiva also carry the philosophies of the Phoenix. And there is a great story for this. There was a dispute between a lion daimyo and a crane daimyo. Because there was always a dispute between a lion and a crane. And the two sides, the dispute was over some minor issue. And it was arrogance and pride that spurred it on to the point that it was reaching a military confrontation. And two sides lined up on this valley. And a force of Phoenix, led by the clan champion, came into the middle. Interposed them between the two sides. The Phoenix champion responded to them, saying, If you do this, you will throw the Empire out of balance for a hundred years. What you do this day will outlive both of you. I will not let this happen. I will not let arrogance and pride tear the empire apart. The lion, of course, thought that the phoenix were going to fight on the side of their crane allies, and so attacked. The phoenix did not draw a blade. And in fact, they stood there, letting themselves be slaughtered. Whenever a lion killed one, another would just step up and take his place. And the lion could not deal with this. 
they were having their commanders commit seppuku because they could not follow the orders to attack and kill these valorous and brave men who were willing to die for whatever principles that they were believing in. Meanwhile, the Crane Daimyo came to our Shiba champion. And he's like, he was like, why are you doing this? Let us fight this battle. And this Shiba champion looked past the crane and said, I and my men do not wish to see the world that you would make. Your arrogance and your pride cost innocent people their lives. And that is not a world we would wish to live in. And the crane champion, the crane daimyo, struck down this Sheba champion. The Sheba, again, did not raise a hand to defend himself. He let the crane kill him. And the crane felt his ancestors turn their backs on him. And his final response, his final act as a samurai, was he sent his broken daisho to his Matsu enemy, saying that he was going to retire to the Asahina temples and try to bring about the world that this Shiva wanted through words, not blood. The lion, of course, was like, oh, my opponent's no longer a samurai? I don't know what the Shiba said to him, but man, it must have broken him. I wish I knew what he said. But heh, I win. Better vengeance. That that's of course how a Matsu thinks. But the fact is the Phoenix were willing to die to stop this and they weren't just willing to fight and die they were willing to let themselves be slaughtered rather than draw blood and drive the empire apart and that is the philosophy of the Sheba they will defend in the Sawa but they will try to avoid conflict, avoid bloodshed whenever possible, even if it kills them. Yeah, the Phoenix are an interesting philosophy. The third of the core families of the Phoenix are the Asako. To the rest of the Empire, the Asako are historians and librarians, tracking down fables and half-remembered myths, accosting travelers and making them tell them stories. 
gathering all knowledge they can and putting it into the great Asako library in Gisetashi. But there's more than that. You see, after Shiba died, his spirit lived on. In fact, each subsequent Crane Champion gets merged with the spirit of Shiba. Passing on some of that knowledge and wisdom. But the first instance of this was Shiva's spirit merged with that of his son. And he passed on important information to Asako. He passed on his exact manner of death. And he passed on the final lesson of Shinsei. This final lesson of Shinsei was the road for human immortality and divinity. And no one's exactly sure how the secret got out that the Asako had learned this or had learned a lesson from Shinsei that they did not. But the Asao were incensed. They demanded that the Asako turn over this knowledge to them. The Asako family refused. And so, with the exception of those who had to remain to tend the library, the Asako family was forever banished from Gisetashi. Since the Asako's rebellion against the Asawa, they are not allowed to set foot inside Gisetashi. Which means when one of the librarians retires, when one of the librarians dies and needs to be replaced, they are carried out by monks And then their replacement is carried in by monks so that an Asako foot never touches ground in Gisetashi. Ever. For any reason. Those Asako that are within the Great Library literally can never leave. They live and die in that library. All because they had learned a secret that they did not want to give to the Asawa. Of course, the reason for that secret not being given to the Asawa is the Asawa are prideful and arrogant and would lord it over people or would try to master it too quickly because they're the Asawa. They get whatever they want. Of course... There's another family that joined 
the Phoenix later on. That is the Agasha family. Oh, wait, the Agasha family are a dragon family, right? Well, not at the time that they joined. Basically, there was stuff going on in the dragon clan. And the Agasha family, or the majority of the Agasha family, said, yeah, no. Peace out. Phoenix, hi! Uh, we'd like to swear loyalty to you. And the Phoenix were like, uh, sure, why not? You, you gotta bring secrets, right? And so thus the Agasha family left the dragon for the Phoenix. And one of the things that was developed by the Agasha family was something that the Phoenix had not ever been able to truly master. But because of the Agasha family with access to the Phoenix records, Phoenix libraries, plus their own unique perspectives from their traditional focus on alchemy, they were able to figure this out. Multi-elemental prayers. Prayers that interacted with Kami of more than one element. And that became their signature, their gift to the Phoenix. And of course the Phoenix used that knowledge, trading that knowledge as leverage with other clans. But that is the Phoenix for you. They are Oh, let's just let's just be quite honest. They are quite simply better than you. And they know it. Or at least that's how they see themselves. Hope you enjoyed this video. I hope this leaves you with a better understanding of who the Phoenix are at their core. Next week. Ah, uh, next week. The Clan of Secrets, the Scorpion, get their coverage. We get to shine the light on them and see how they scurry about. Until then, I'd like you all to remember to have fun and keep gaming.